Hello and welcome back to Functional Programming Fridays. Uh, I have been, sorry, excuse me as I rifle through my notes here. I have been working on uh, the filter functions this week. Uh, I really need to stress here that they're not called filter functions in Common Lisp and that made life a little bit more difficult than it ought to have been when I was learning this because I was applying what I'd learned from you know Python and JavaScript and uh, well, Java and other functional languages so when I was googling for you know filter nothing turned up turns out they're not called filter in common list, but they are there's actually six functions that we might want to concern ourselves with uh, and they are remove delete remove if delete if remove if not, which is deprecated, and delete if not, which is also deprecated. Now, honestly, I don't know what deprecation means in the common Lisp spec, since I believe it was standardized in 1994, I think, and hasn't been touched since, and isn't likely to be touched again, because there is enough in the spec to keep the language relevant for decades, like because of the macros and things like that. There, there's little that you can't later add into the language yourself uh, and libraries can fill in for new paradigms and things like that which is great but it does lead to a little bit of confusion when something in the spec is listed as deprecated nevertheless I'm going to cover remove if not and delete if not very very briefly but I'm not going to go into too much detail about them we're just going to focus around remove delete remove if and delete if uh, now, what you're seeing on the screen here, uh, this is going to help us. This is just a little boilerplate code that I've already, you know, uh, added into the interpreter. But we'll we'll use that in a little while. Uh, we have a few things that we need to discuss before we we get to that. There we go. So what remove does is remove takes an object or an item and a sequence and removes that object from the sequence as we can see here. There is no for in this sequence. Uh, so that's pretty cool. However, we might want to remove a slightly more complicated object like a list. And as you can see, that list hasn't been removed. Uh, the remove function has a keyword argument, so I'm going to find out where that is. There we go. And I'm going to say test. There we go. The test, if we can hover over here. Um, you can see that the default argument to test here at the bottom of the screen is the EQL function and that just won't compare lists to one another. So we need to use the test equal function and this will check if that is equal to this list and then it will drop in. So this is how remove works and uh, with the compound objects like a list so we we'll want to use that test there. We can also, um, there's, a, there's a lot more to it. If you look at the bottom of the screen, we've got uh, from end, test, test not, start, end, count and key. So let's have a look at test not. So that's possibly the easiest thing from where we were going. I really shouldn't delete the examples. I should just uh, leave those there. So we've got that. This does the inverse. So we're gonna remove we're going to modify, remove from the list one and two where they're not equal to one and two. It's a little bit counterintuitive, especially if you're used to filter from another language. Uh, but these tests and test nots uh, invert the function. So that's what we're looking for. In This is our needle. This is our haystack. And this is what we want to do. We're either looking for that or 
we're either looking to remove this or remove everything that is not the needle. So maybe that's better terminology to think of this as needle and haystack and we're, we're what we're going to do either we're going to try and lose the needle or lose the haystack. Um, that yeah that makes sense in my head. Uh, so something else we can do. We are going to try and remove number one from the list of um, And what we're going to do is we're going to pass a count. So we are going to remove um, this needle, this one, from this haystack of four ones, a two, and four ones, but we're only going to count it four times. So the first four ones get removed from the list, and then from two onwards, um, we continue because this is zero, one, two, three, and four. So we've counted four. Uh, and two failed check because we're trying to remove one. So that's how we get that. There's something else you can use if you want. From end by default is nil. But if we do this, we actually start removing the ones from the end of the list to the beginning. But if you omit the count, it is actually exactly the same as just saying, you know, remove one. Uh, and it might even be slower because it has to go to the end of the list and move forward rather than start from the beginning of the list and move back to the end. So if you're not using a count, there's no point using a from end. Um, it is basically a way of just dropping things from the end of the list up to a certain point. Otherwise, you just remove them all, really. Um, so there's no benefit to using from end without using a count. Uh, so that is that we can also um, do this we have a start get rid of the from end because contrary to my advice I've just proven to you uh, so we're going to start from the second element so that would be 0 1 and starting here I'm going to drop that drop that for 4 um, then we go here, and then we drop that, and we drop that, and we get these two ones hanging off the end there. So we've dropped the first four ones from the list that we can find, starting at the second element. So we've got this, this start thing here. As with the start, we can also specify the end, so I'm just going to count 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to stop at 6. Um, I guess that overrides the count. Did not know how those two argu those those arguments would interact. So that's interesting. But with the start and the end, we can start from the second position, which is here, um, removing ones. So we'd remove that. So we've got that one, two, two then we stop at the sixth position. So that's where the start and end. And we have, I believe, seven keyword arguments. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So really, we're only looking at this, this seventh argument now. And this is the most confusing thing because you have to use it with in conjunction with um, the, the test. So this is the crazy bit. That's why we've got this code here. This is what we're going to use this for. We're going to create a list of albums. Um, and honestly, and I'm sorry, this is a very overrated album in my opinion. There's some good songs on it, but you know, it's it's not it's not 
the best album I've ever heard in my life. But you're not here for my uh, music reviews, so um, take that with a pinch of salt. If I've offended your musical sensibilities, I am sorry. But we just need test data. data into the list. There we go, we've got three albums. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove albums that are um, seven or less rating. So we're going to remove seven from albums. We're going to test or less. Um, uh, this is just an out by one error on my part. I apologize because this is seven. We need to be, you know, six or less because this basically maps on to. This is false because uh, this gets passed as the first parameter and that the second uh, and I always get it the wrong way around just because I'm reading it left to right. Um, I, I have a bit of a backwards way of thinking. So this will fail, but in reality, um, this is what we want. So that, now I have a forwards way of thinking. I'm reading this as the first argument that. So this, this is how it actually looks, you know, six bigger than seven. Um, so six is the second parameter to our test function here, rating is the implicitly created accessor function method for the album. So, you know, it's basically the same as you know, we get the nine for the rating of that. Um, so that's what rating does. Uh, and that's what this this test thing. So putting this together, um, it is the equivalent of saying our test function needs to take two parameters. So we get the first parameter from here, and we get the second parameter from calling this function on each item in albums. So this has to be a one argument parameter. This is a two argument parameter because it takes the needle that we're looking for and then it uses this key function on each item in the haystack to build up this stuff and uh, return us this. So we'll get rid of that and we've got um, Fleetwood Mac and Coheed and Cambria that are uh, bigger than six. And let me just check seven is bigger than this. Yes, that returns true. So remove drops um, items from the haystack that fail this, this test at the end of the day. So that is um, pretty cool. That is how you can, and I, I like the way this looks. This is really, really expressive. Um, takes a while to get your head around it, but it's it's pretty cool. Uh, however, if you this is if you're comparing, you know, objects by two things. If you're wanting to do something pretty advanced, if you're just wanting to remove one item that repeats in a list, that's fine. Um, 
you know, and you can you can do test for, for equal, but this will compare the needle to each item in the haystack. So this is a two parameter test. And it's two parameters when we're using remove. However, if what we're operating on, um, if we're just wanting to drop things from a list uh, that you really only need one thing, like if you want to drop all odd numbers from a list, we can use remove if because it's, um, and it calls it predicate, yeah. So if we, we have a look here at remove, you can see that we've got all these extra keyword arguments here from and, test, test not, Remove if doesn't have any of that, it just has a single predicate function here. And it can take a key. Um, it absolutely can, and I'm sure I've got notes on that. But maybe not. Um, excuse me while I rifle through them. Yes, we can. So, um, we can express what we did here using remove if and I'm just going to do that now for you uh, so we can pass a lambda function in and this will take one argument so this will be a uh, rating I mean not yet but it will be uh, and this is going to be bigger than or equal to uh, 6 and this is going to take rating I'm going to pass in albums. I'm going to pass in the key function. And again, this is going to be rating. And I'm just going to print that. There we go. And you can see here that this has done exactly the same as that. But we had to write this lambda function that takes a rating and it does all of this. And we use the key function again to get the um, one argument function that each of the objects gets passed into. Uh, but our, our function here takes one argument um, and we hard code the value in here. So this is how I was used to writing filter functions. Um, when I'm working with stuff like this, that's two arguments, um, I think I would rather use this than this, just because it's that I've already got, you know, these functions built in. I'm having to write a lambda function around built-in functionality to the language, and looking at this in the function, it's kind of like a magic number. You don't know what it is. Um, we're removing six here. That's pretty obvious based on the test and the rating. Here in the middle of a lambda function, it's probably less obvious. So the way I'm choosing to view it is, um, I'll put a print here. If you are dealing with simply uh, matching a single function to an object in the list, use remove if, because we can simply make it match a certain criteria, odd p, even p. Uh, you could have a prime function somewhere that takes a number and figures out if it's prime, um, or you know, whatever you want really, if it's a happy number or even a happy prime. I don't, I don't think the language particularly cares. You need a lot of memory for that, I imagine, but hey, whatever. Um, so if it's just a single function that does one thing to an argument, I think the remove if is the way to go. But if you're doing sort of complex operations where you need to compare one thing to another using keys, the remove form looks nicer to me. Now for completeness sake, this is our remove if odd p, our remove not is the inversion. So 
you know, you can do this. I wonder. No, I don't think it would be possible to use a um, I really don't think this is going to work. Yeah, no. No, that absolutely does not work. And I wouldn't expect it to. I just I was just curious. So what we could do here is if this was anything, if this was odd p, we could simply do even p. Um, but for a more con uh, complex example, again, we could do lambda x not odd p. P X and we would get the inverse of whatever that function is doing. We could build up using a lambda function. So I see why they're saying remove if is deprecated because everything you can do uh, with remove if not you can do by writing a lambda function and using not on your predicate um, which is probably how it works under the hood maybe. And it's the same with remove if it's complicated just just use remove so that's it for the remove remove if and remove if not i'm just gonna put these back just so that we can see it for for completeness sake uh, the other thing to be aware of is um the delete delete and delete if not So delete is exactly the same form as remove. There's nothing different about it at all except the function argument name. And we got these two things back. Um, so we are just simply dropping Green Day from there. However, The problem is delete may alter the original array. So by doing that, our album's array has been transformed. So I have to then put this back in and we'll say albums. And we've got the three back there again. If we do that, we get nothing. But there's three items in there. So it's the spec says that delete may alter the original list. So it might it might not, it's undefined behavior, I believe, so different common lisp interpreters might do it different ways. I have had mixed results with it where sometimes it would alter my list and sometimes it wouldn't. Um, so I guess it would depend on the particular documentation of your um, interpreter. Let's put that back. Yeah, we've got, you know, the three things there. Uh, and we've got the two now. But yet the three remain in albums. So, you know, it can, it can vary. So yeah, we've got American Idiot come back. Oh, and, and it's, it's there. So, just be aware with delete, it may not always do quite what you think it does. Um, so you have been warned. Whoops. So say delete if, and we're gonna say, um, Evaluate that in. So 
So we've evaluated that. We're deleting if uh, odd p numbers. We get two, four, six, eight, ten, which is exactly what we might expect. However, nums has been transformed, but one still stays in the the list, so that's a bit weird. Um, but delete if returned what we wanted, it just screwed up the the nums. So if we evaluate that again. We evaluate it, we get 13579. And if we evaluate nums now, having done that, we get 13579, which is probably what we would expect. So your mileage may vary. Um, if there is a pattern to what delete is doing, I have not noticed it yet. Uh, so apologies about that. There might not even be a pattern. I don't know. I'm not. Again, if there is one, I haven't found it. But this is, you know, your remove, uh, your remove if, remove if not, delete, delete if, and delete if not. I tend to favor remove uh, and remove if. Again, remove if not and delete if not are deprecated. Um, although, again, what that means, who knows. So this is hopefully everything you could possibly want to know about filter functions and predicates in common lists. Next week, we are going to have a look at the reduce function, and following that, we're going to have a look at the map reduce algorithm, which hopefully will be a lot of fun. I hope that was interesting to you. I hope you're enjoying your Friday. I hope you enjoy your weekend, and thank you for the massive amount of support my channel received last weekend. It was incredible. Um, thank you, everyone that watched and uh, subscribed, liked the videos. It was a massive help. I don't like doing the please like, share and subscribe thing. So, you know, I just want to say thank you for those that, that feel they want to do that. I'm not doing it to become particularly famous or anything like that. This is information I've started recording for friends. I've just learnt there is a huge demand for videos like this. So I'll keep making them if you keep wanting me to and as long as I am able to. So again, thank you everyone. Take care. Enjoy your weekend.